Hello, I'm Dr. Riley Mahaffey with the Upper Cervical Spine Center. I want to talk to you guys about concussions, the nerve system, as well as the spinal structure. Maybe you've suffered from a concussion, maybe you've just felt the symptoms, and maybe that concussion was maybe unreported. What research says is that one of every two concussions, unfortunately one of those is not reported, or it's just missed. A lot of times, most people don't have the same symptoms. Everyone's brain is different, everyone's nerve system is different. So maybe you're experiencing headaches when someone else might not be experiencing headaches. Maybe drowsiness, maybe extremely tired, maybe you just never feel rested. Maybe even some emotional outbursts, maybe angry, unhappy, um, just irritable, maybe some depression, anxiety. Here's the thing, the brain is an amazing, amazing sponge. If that has been jostled and it takes 160 Gs of force to cause that concussion, of the brain sloshing maybe on the front, the back, the sides of the skull, damaging the skull. But here's the other thing most people don't know. If it takes 160 Gs of force to damage that brain and slosh it around, that's a lot of force, right? Did you know it only takes 4.5 Gs of force to damage and injure the neck? Here's the thing. When you have a concussion, you also have an injury to the neck. Now here's the thing. What do you think is gonna be better? Maybe also fixing the neck, correcting the neck to help that concussion? Absolutely. It's a two-for-one special. So the reason why I know this is because at 18, um, I actually was listed as brain damage from multiple concussions. I had eight concussions in 10 years, and that was due to uh, soccer. I was a soccer goalie. Now, what I learned from that is every time I had a concussion, it actually took longer and longer to heal. That concussion symptoms would last longer and longer and longer. Unfortunately, my last one did list me as brain damage, but what I found was I found a chiropractor. He started working on my neck to make sure the proper communication can go from the brain to the body as well as the body back up to the brain. And simply put, he looked and focused most of his attention up the upper cervical region. Because here's the thing, the brain stem is actually housed and protected in this, to these top two bones. If they are shifted, twisted, contorted, you actually have a double whammy. You've now put pressure onto that brain stem that can't communicate for that brain back and forth. Because here's the thing, when the brain communicates or heals, it needs that brain stem. It doesn't just communicate side to side or back to front. A message will start in that brain, travel back to that brain stem, and then back up to that brain. So if that bone shift and twisted and pulls on that brain stem, what do you think happens to that message? That message might get misinterpreted. Maybe that healing message gets misinterpreted. And then unfortunately, over time, that concussion symptoms last longer and longer and longer. A lot of times, concussions can happen from many different activities. A lot of times we see that with sports. Unfortunately, uh, uh, boys, when they play football, that's most common. Female soccer is the second most common, and men's ice hockey is actually the third most common. What we also know is two out of every 10 high school athletes will unfortunately have a concussion this year. We play very contact sports. With that, if you, have a student at home, student athlete at home, maybe is struggling in school, maybe is having some of these issues and maybe just played a game before, maybe get them checked out. See if this area is a gigantic reason why they're having these concussions. These symptoms are lasting longer. I will tell you this, I can tell you because I was the one with all the concussion issues, that this absolutely is the key to unlocking that brain's potential to heal properly so you can get back into sports, you can get back into doing more things you would like to do. I will say this, after getting this area corrected, my focus was actually a whole heck of a lot better, which was even better because I started doing better in school. With that, what I also see is, uh, I see it at a very early age, unfortunately, sometimes with infants, when they're learning how to walk, sometimes they can hit their head. Please pay attention to that. One thing I've noticed with a lot of young kids especially after concussion, they might hold their head into a really long position when they're laying in bed or laying in the crib or in the cradle. Check that. If their head is tilted off to that right side a lot or head tilted off that left side and they're maybe having some of these sleep issues, maybe they have a concussion. Come into the office, get fully assessed, and get this area ultimately corrected. A lot of times they chase the symptoms. Why don't we get to the root source of this issue and get it ultimately corrected?